Hello, friends. Uh, the last series of videos, uh, we were talking about the my personal meditation experiences, and in that series, today I'd like to talk about the energy uh, or the forces. Um, which we will encounter or which we could en- encounter during meditation um, practices so when i talk about energy uh, we all have energy in our body we cannot see them but we know that they exist so one example could be uh let's say i want to move my hand okay so if i want to move my hand from here to this position i'm doing it through my will power okay i'm uh wishing yeah i'm thinking that i should be my hand hand should be moved and the hand moves the, of course this implies that there is an an energy behind it we know it but we do not feel that particular energy we see the outcome okay the hand is moving we do not feel that energy uh on the other hand uh we have some energy of forces in our body which we can also feel during meditation practices so uh during my early days of meditation uh i'm talking about around 7 years back okay in those days now uh, during the initial days uh, as soon as i sit for meditation um, i used to have some uh, uh movement of energy it used to let's say go around my face and so on so i have explained that in the previous videos so in particular in this video i'd like to stress uh, or i'd like to cover the aspects which are more potent or which has a more dynamic nature okay so if someone is keeping their attention focused oh, no focused is different from attention focusing means uh, if you stare at something okay keep on staring at a particular point that then that is called focusing attention means you just let's say you are aware of this point and then you stay there yeah do not deviate from that so attention and focusing are different so if someone is keeping their attention in the forehead point and if they meditate what happens is within the brain the brain itself has got a lot of uh, networks okay uh, and within the brain one would start to experience a slight uh, movement of something okay uh, we are giving the name energy to it but all initially one can say that okay something happened here there was a slight movement and then this keeps on going initially it will be on one side and slowly it might one might feel the energy or the presence of the energy in some other parts of the head and it goes on and uh this keeps growing in uh magnitude when i say magnitude one can sense okay one can feel that this energy spread all around the head and finally somehow all these energies energies okay they get together to form a ball like structure a small tiny ball very small okay and then it keeps on moving around the head we will not know where it is going to move or we will not know how it is moving 
but we will know its presence so if I say that the energy is here then it means this part is doing something or at least this portion of the head is feeling something okay and this energy can be let's say I have felt it all around the head this is gentle and this energy is also conscious when I say conscious what I mean is uh, let's say the energy is here on this part of the head and we will have sensation sensations like someone pulling your hair also okay sometimes it will be a uh, pricking also uh, when we say ouch when we because of the pain when we say oh it's hurting then this movement slows down and it becomes silent okay then uh, we will not feel anything and then after a while it starts again so uh, it's gentle and uh, with willpower we can even move this energy okay so if I buy if I keep the attention here then uh, after a while this energy comes even to this place so this can be moved around what is it doing it's doing something inside our head we cannot see okay uh, what is the relevance of this energy in the modern days or even uh, do we have any reference to the literatures in the literatures about this particular energy this energy is what we call as Shakti path yeah we all know that the gurus give Shakti path to their disciples and uh, people say that Shakti path is the way uh, through which the guru transmits his energy to the disciple I would not uh, fully buy into that but rather I would say that there is no transfer of energy from the guru to the disciple but the guru awakens the energy in the disciple or in other words the disciple will start to feel the energy in his head okay so the difference is the guru is not transferring something Okay, he is just enabling the disciple so that he can feel the energy in his head. Because God has given everyone uh, all these energies and uh, we all have come to this world with um, all these energies already packed inside. Yeah? We do not realize it or we do not feel it. That's all. So, um, this is Shakti path. What happens in Shakti path is again the Guru touches this portion, the forehead, and uh, maybe some will uh, start to feel the energy sensation straight away, or later on uh, in their lifetime they might feel it, and so on. So on. Um, the energy which I mentioned earlier yeah, is that Shakti path energy. Okay? It is not Kundalini. We will cover Kundalini later. So, whatever, uh, whoever who has to do something with the forehead, yeah, they are just, let's say, uh, they are just talking about or they are just dealing with this energy. Okay? It is not Kundalini. Um, even in Christianity we have this uh, um, the equivalent of Shakti path uh, they used to call it as baptism in the very old days you know, John the Baptist he was one famous guy who baptized Jesus himself so uh, talking about John there is one reference which comes from Isaiah 40 chapter 40 verse 3 which says prepare the way for the 
Lord. Prepare the way for the Lord. Okay. Make the path straight. Make a straight highway for the Lord. Okay. So there are some references. So what was John doing? John was giving or baptizing people. And when he baptized Jesus, uh, it is also mentioned in the New Testament that uh, the Lord came in the form of a dove uh, to Jesus. Okay, so two important things. One is straight path. Okay, make a path for the Lord. Uh, and then God comes to the person. Now, uh, what is the relevance of this path and this particular energy in the forehead is after a while this energy keeps moving around in the head and then what it tried to do was to come to this portion of the head the top portion of the head and it was trying to go out it is a very very scary experience I did not let it go out uh, and I shifted my attention either to the throat or the heart during the meditation so that I can let's say push this energy somewhere else but the energy was silent for some time and then again finally it always came up to the top portion of the head this went on for three or four days and then finally I said okay go Let's see. Uh, it was scary because my feeling was that if this energy is going out of my head, uh, I might die. This is the feeling. Okay. So I finally let it go out. Uh, what happened was for about 10 to 20 seconds, there was nothing after this energy went out. Pure silence. And then just like a, how a uh, firecracker, it is called flower pot. We used to keep it on the ground and light it. Um, pieces of, uh, let's say, some flower. It's not really flower. It goes up in the air and it falls down, okay, in small pieces. We can hear some different sounds from that uh, cracker. Just like the way how the flower pot uh, um, is lit up, this energy, when when it went out, it, I, I would imagine that it went up to a certain height and then it started to fall like showers on my head. Okay, just like in different areas of the head. And one other experience which I had at that time was that there was a very strong rod, a straight pipe being inserted on the top of my head just imagine that the head is split and then when someone is inserting a strong tube or a pipe how does it feel so I had that experience and then I came out of that meditation and then and that was over uh, I then thought this uh, energy would have disappeared completely but it did not go away Okay, it is just, let's say, it was and, and it is still going around in the head in all different directions and so on. One difference after this insertion of the tube experience is that this energy started to go up and down. It sometimes goes here and then comes here, down. So it started to go in the vertical direction, okay. Um, this went on for a while and this tube is very straight okay very straight the reason why I mentioned about Isaiah and the, um, prepare a path for the Lord in the wilderness is that this energy is not Kundalini but this energy prepares the awakening of the kundalini okay so the way how it work uh, works is that this goes up and down the tube is formed 
steadily and then at a certain stage what happens is uh, the kundalini awakens so when i say kundalini um, according to the literature they talk about uh, a dormant energy at the um, tail end of the backbone okay now uh, even when i hear some experiences in in the world from people who have uh, had kundalini experiences they always talk about the rising of the kundalini from the base of the spine they don't mention anything about an energy which is coming from above so the reason is what i experienced was it is not i can say there are two major differences compared to what i have read and heard compared to what i have experienced the first one is there is an energy a bit bigger than the other energy the other energy is let's say it's quite small okay very small a spherical in spherical shape the other energy which originates somewhere outside the head okay it is not inside the head one day what happened was uh, there was an energy in the size of a, a lemon for example okay that energy started to come into my head along the same tube which was established earlier did the tube already exist and did i not realize that or was the tube newly created based on the effects of that particular meditation session i do not know okay but this lime or lemon sized uh, energy a gentle energy started to come down the difference between the lime sized energy and the previous one in the forehead is that this energy is also gentle the lime sized one is gentle it comes down very very slowly gradually but our body is fixed fixed in the sense we will not be even uh, be able to move our hands or anything even if there is fear does not matter it is our body is just fixed like a stone okay and this energy acts so uh it is conscious but uh it will not listen to us we have to listen to that something like that there is a difference okay so this energy started to come down that is the first thing the uh, descending energy okay kundalini is not just the ascending energy it is also the descending energy so this comes down and then in my case it started to pull an energy which was in the throat part okay usually i have read it was always in the base of the spine but i don't know why it was here but i did have experience or sensations earlier uh like a train uh, the old steam engine train the way how they start okay something like that so such sensations i have heard had in the base of the spine and also um, bubbles think of uh, a big bubble under the water and it is bursting it is trying to come out and burst yeah so like that series of bubbles coming trying to come up so those things uh but what really happened was this energy came down up to my throat and then it caught hold of another energy which is here which was here and then they both started to travel upward and then i was able to watch it very carefully okay all we, all we can do is just watch what is happening that's all nothing more so 
uh, it was going up, up. Yeah, I can also even tell that the way how it was going is that just think of an uh, intestine. Yeah, our intestine. And if we stitch uh, the intestine with the sew sewing machine, yeah, like um, the ones which I used to make dresses, if we sew, the needle goes in to that intestine on that intestine yeah how is the sensation can you imagine so we that was the sensation which i had it was just going like uh it was stitching yeah it was a stitching sensation but not on a cloth but on an intestine like a, a thick thing it was going like that it went up here and then uh, it went out okay um, both the energies went out uh, then what happened was that um, this uh, head was like a magnetized eye okay it's like uh, trying to attract something or like uh, or the other word which I can put here is the antenna it's like it was like an antenna trying or ready to receive any signals okay I don't know what sort of signals but it was the head was like that um, so this was my experience and now uh, I try to read or find out more about this this process it should be referenced in some yoga text but I have not come across anything what I am looking for is there should be some reference to some energy coming down and taking this up in some yoga text. Okay. And then again, the reason why I quoted Esaya is that um, make a straight path for the Lord. Okay. So these are the references I was able to find. Uh, so in a way, this energy which the Guru gives through Shakti path or so on, uh, which the Guru triggers using Shakti path, paves the way for the Kundalini so that it can go to the top. That's the way how I see it. Okay, and how do I know that this is Kundalini? That is also important. Okay. Um, I can give two two answers for that. One was uh, when such things happened. I mean, this happened over a period of about let's say, maybe two weeks, three weeks. So every day different experience and so on. But finally, one day this I had this experience of this energy rising up or ascending. Um, I used to get lot of a uh, lot of dreams. And uh, they were all about snakes. And so and then I tried to find out what a snake means and so on. So it all went and pointed out to Kundalini. So that was one. I used to tell all these stories to my wife. She used to just listen. And she was uh, hearing the term Kundalini for the first time in her life. Even that was new for me. So I tried to explain what could have happened and she was just listening and nodding her head and said okay okay fine because she did not understand anything and then uh, one day in Frankfurt we met another guy and uh, a guitarist uh, who was playing for a band and he was into serious meditation stuff and so on he called my wife and I didn't know him Okay, I did not even say hello to him. I was doing something else somewhere. So uh, by looking at him, he told my wife that he feels uh, or he is reminded of Kundalini when he sees me. So my wife was shocked. And she said, uh, she told me, okay, uh, this guy is saying like that so there should be really something called kundalini and so on so so uh, i'm almost certain that this is kundalini 
okay so why did it uh, start from here i don't know i don't have any experience or explanation for that uh, so that was one um is there any other reference which i can give for this uh, descending energy yes this i can give uh if we talk uh, if we talk about uh, murugan lord muruga he uh, they would write as uh, muruga lord muruga has got two wives one is devanai the other one is valli yeah so devan okay devanai uh okay i should explain the context uh, lord muruga is the soul okay is the soul devana is the energy which controls the sense organs on the senses devana is devana means uh, what uh, she is the daughter of indra indra is um, indriyam yeah indriyam is the organs the sense organs and the uh, leader of uh, the sense organs is the mind and the devana devana is the uh, energy which is which is very closely attached with the human soul okay you can either refer it to as the mind or the senses okay devana uh so they are together then murugan finds someone called valli he comes uh, disguised he disguises himself and then he comes and he marries valli valli is the one uh, which let's say according to me is the uh, reference to kundalini okay so he tries to come and then uh, valli was longing for murugan so he marries and then they both live together so this is one reference where murugan comes uh, to valli the other one is uh, even in the story of krishna uh, now krishna marries someone called rukmini rukmini is uh, a reference to kundalini in fact because uh, even in that story krishna comes and carries away uh, rukmini so if you look at uh, where rukmini was living uh, it is uh, i think it is called kundina they would not uh, mention kundalini they just talk about kundina and uh, she was born somewhere in a kundal nagar or something like that so they have some references so if we look uh, more into detail from that perspective we will we should find um, the clear explanation of this uh, descending energy but on the other hand even in the yoga texts like maybe trimandiram there should be some very strong reference to this descending energy because it is not just the ascending kundalini energy something comes down to take this up maybe maybe there is another reason for that just imagine kundalini will have to rise up to here okay and uh, but the gurus they always focus on the forehead and not here instead of fo- or touching this part of the head why can't they just touch here simple yeah then the kundalini will just go straight here the reason is they say they say uh, up to here uh, rising the kundalini or getting the kundalini up to here can be done can be done through will power but beyond that uh, we need god's grace this is what they say uh, i'm not sure but uh, the way how i see is even for the rising um, my theory is that the descending energy should come down and take this up so that they meet somewhere and then the rest of the things happen now 
is kundalini good or bad and so on it it is dangerous it is dangerous in the sense it will destroy our identity which we have about ourselves okay so if i uh, believe that i'm just a human being i have a family i have a car and i have a house i'm i'm happy and if i have this kundalini experience what it tries to do is that it tries to bring us back to our original nature so any wrong ideas which we would have about ourselves will be destroyed okay so that will be uh, destroyed totally so it's like shattering our dream world or or the real world as we thought okay that will be shattered so th- that is one uh, aspect that other one is our body uh, when we were born the body has got certain energy in some uh, in some certain balance okay and uh, moving the energy either forcefully we cannot move the energy forcefully okay so there is no harm in trying for kundalini because it is not something which we can trigger it has to be done automatically okay but triggering this energy is possible <laughs> yeah through uh, hard work attention and uh, meditation but uh, playing with the energy is not good because um we have we have a certain balance in our body when some energy moves from one place to the other and so on then uh, the functioning of the bodily organs will not be as smooth as possible okay so there is no added advantage or rather there are more disadvantages for the body if not done properly okay if the meditation practices are not done properly there are more disadvantages so i should mention that mm. yeah at the end of the day one can even say the feelings of these energy and so on are just lunatic and maybe this could be a strange disease for example yeah we never know. we do not know but by looking at the scriptures and the texts and so on we have some very good references okay these are the steps this could happen these are the step uh, let's say there are some sequences uh, if we compare one by one yes they do match uh, and the journey is a very long journey just like many people say that kundalini okay awakening kundalini in 5 minutes no impossible okay uh, it is not possible at least from my perspective it takes years 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 and it goes on so thank you and uh, i'll see you in the next video bye